Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at our second differential equation, the one that relates the, the variable theta, which is the variable which associates position of the electron relative to the positive z-axis. Now there's the equation that we had before, and notice that the only way that we can find a solution that makes sense out of this equation is if the quantity within brackets here is a positive quantity. So without actually solving the, the differential equation, which we will do later, we're just going to look at the format of the equation and say that the only way we can have a valid solution to this equation is if what's in this bracket is equal to a positive quantity, so that this plus this being positive equals zero. That requires that this must be greater than m sub l squared divided by sine squared of theta for all values of theta. Now notice that theta can be zero, and then we end up with m sub l squared divided by zero, and of course this can only be true if m sub l at that point is equal to zero, in the limit as theta approaches zero. When theta equals 90 degrees, and this becomes equal to one, and then again, this should be greater than this, so the requirement is that if this must be greater than this, for regardless of what the value of theta is, that can only be accomplished if L is greater than or equal to M sub L. And of course, it depends upon what the value for theta is as to what this has to be. But L must always be greater than or equal to M sub L, never be smaller. And since M sub L, which is the orbital magnetic quantum number, can have values of zero, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and so forth, that means that the ultimate limit then is for m sub l is that it almost that it can have every one of these values as long as it's smaller than or equal to l which means and of course the absolute value of that which means it could be the negative value or the positive value of l but that means that m sub l is now limited to the possible values that it can have to the value of l itself and so there's a relationship between the orbital quantum number an orbital magnetic quantum number that m sub l can never be greater than l. And so at least that gives us some additional insight into what the limitations are to the wave function of the electron in the hydrogen atom, and then later on we'll see how we actually solve this equation and find specific values for it so that ultimately we can find the solution of the Schrodinger equation in the three dimensions in spherical coordinates. So that's how we slowly figure out what the structure of the atom should be based upon the limitations of the differential equations. And that's how it's done.